You need to hit me with a gut punch. Uh -huh. That's why You'll I'm starting You'll never get good off. at keynote speaking if you only practice four times a year. Your job is to help me see the world like you see the world. What's up, man? Hey, how are you? Happy, happy trails from LA, dude. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, man. What do you got? Uh, so I just wanted to ask kind of how you, how, how long ago did you start doing this? Doing what? Instagram? Just content. Wow, dude. When I sold my business at 22. So that's, how old am I? 30, I'm almost 39. 39 but, but content, wow. that was, that was pre-social media. Like that was content. I was speaking. Oh, okay. So just keynote speaking? Keynote speaking. Yeah. Workshops, keynote speaking, traveling and being hired to speak at different gigs. Like that's content. Mm -hmm. And then what was the first platform you used? YouTube? Probably. No, YouTube wasn't even out, dude. Um, Damn, I'm trying started to think that long Facebook ago. And LinkedIn. Yeah, man. Damn. <laughs> I've had my YouTube channel for 10 years. I recently just found out about your stuff, honestly. That's okay. I, I, I yeah. can tell. <laughs> but I like, I like, yeah, I like the whole uh, hashtag believe movement. Yeah, you got that. Otherwise, it would have been at the event in LA, man. That was the biggest event of all. Do you plan on coming back anytime soon? I'm in LA a couple times a year. There's always stuff that brings you back to LA. Yeah. Uh, but, but often it's in and out, depending on what, depending on the event and what I'm speaking in um, calendars. So, uh, but LA and New York, we always get to a couple times a year. Just, just, in the nature of what I do. Yeah, I understand. How did, how did you kind of get uh, initiated into the whole uh, keynote space? Like, how did, did you just start accepting any jobs that really just came up and just started going from there? I sold my business when I was 22. I was uh -huh. seen as a young entrepreneur success story. And I got asked to speak at different events to young entrepreneurs. Mm. And then I built a name for myself. And then the way to get speaking gigs is to do speaking gigs. Yeah. Like you do a speaking gig, you have an audience, whether it's 10 people or a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And then if you're good, one of those people says, Hey, can you come speak at this event? And can you speak at that event? And so the more you do, the more people will want you to come and speak at their events. Do you I'm want kinda, to be a speaker? What are you trying to do? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I'm like trying to transition into right now. Um, I'm kind of starting off at a bear platform just hosting events in LA uh, kind of just in the startup scene I'm hosting like startup events like hosting panels at first and then kind of transitioning into getting panelists and then maybe hosting pitch events to give other startups the platform to pitch to investors and then I have like goals of hosting conferences and stuff and talking to some guys that there was a World CryptoCon in Vegas this past November, and that was the first event. But you I want really... to be the organizer or you want to be the speaker? I want to be the organizer and the mon moderator at some, and then some speaking as well. I kind of okay. just want to yeah, attack from all avenues, basically. But, but what do you want to be the best at? Um, keynote speaking. So you need to practice keynote speaking. Yeah, yeah. So my, my goal being the organizer is giving me access to initiate my my path to keynote speaking yeah but that sucks because you can only you can only organize x number of events a year yeah yeah but how, I, how I, many can you do four a year like four big events a year like basically yeah but that's why you'll i'm never starting get good at keynote speaking if you only practice four times a year oh no 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 that's not like my my plan isn't to only speak at the events i host but it's just kind of to give me access to that i, I wanted to hear your opinion on this my opinion is go speak as much as possible for uh -huh. free to build your name and, and forget hosting events until you get amazing at being a keynote speaker. Oh, okay. That makes I would sense. flip it. Like if your goal is to be a keynote speaker, then you go do what, like, look what everybody's doing. Gary, keynote speaker. Now he hosts his own events. Grant, mm -hmm. keynote speaker, hosting 50,000, you know, stadium capacity 10X conference. Patrick B. David just launched The Vault in Dallas. Uh, Steve Harvey just launched, also called The Vault, in L.A. He's coming to L.A. like May something, 23rd or something, or 19, something like that. Like, th that's that's a good path. Yeah, like, I agree. You so, know, speaker, build a huge audience, and then you've got a market to be able to organize and create your own event around. So, So would you say then I should be doing the flip side of it first? If you want to be a great speaker, yeah. 
Yeah. Like, I asked him, what do you want to focus on and be great at? It's keynote speaking. Great. You need to be out every week speaking. Okay. That makes sense. For free. Yeah. Right. Just to start, just to and listen, if you're just starting, you probably suck as a speaker anyway. Right. It's fine. Like fair enough. Yeah. Like you suck at everything at the beginning. It doesn't mean you suck as a human. You just, you get the skills. Yeah. But if you're only practicing four times a year, you'll just never get great at it. Like yeah. if you only practice your jump shot four, four times a year, you're never going to be LeBron. Yeah. Just, right. You just won't. So you yeah. got to practice. So I'd be looking at how do I speak every week at any event that will take me just to practice libraries, mm -hmm. YMCA, crypto, whatever. Now you're in LA, so you're lucky, man. There's like yeah. the stuff happening everywhere. Every, every, the, almost every day, basically. <laughs> this, so like every weekend you need to be speaking somewhere to some event, even if it's the high school kids talking about your entrepreneur journey, anything just to practice. Yeah. Right. And then, and then every day I'd be making content for social Mm. I'd be making YouTube videos and Instagram videos around your, your message to practice. Like it's practice for you, but it's also a, every, every video you make is a chance to get known. It's a mm -hmm. chance for somebody to find you, right? Like I got 1.8 million subscribers on YouTube. You just found me. You just found me recently. And you asked me like, Hey, how'd you get started? Great. Like I'm yeah. still getting noticed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's, that's it. Okay, every cool. time, like content every day on YouTube and Instagram. Like what? So what are you going to talk about? What's what's your what do you talk about? What's kind of kind of kind of just like, well, like in the self-help kind of field, just like really mindset, because like I, I'm, I'm okay. good at articulating that. And then so what's kinda, what's an opinion you have around mindset? Like wh why we're not going to follow you? What are, what are you going to teach you about mindset? Abundance and just not com not being comfortable. Those are two things I'm very adamant about. So what would your, what's your opinion on comfort? Like, give me, give me a one liner that hits me around comfort zone. Don't get comfortable working a nine to five. Because? Because there's more potential in you than sitting behind a desk. Like I've experienced it. Is this that is fair a good enough? starting point. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then, and then just with abundance, just like everyone has potential. So just like, basically, you know, just like finding what you like to do and just working after it, you know? So what you need to do is figure out what's your, what's your spin going to be on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause there's lots of people who are saying similar kind of stuff. Yeah. So what's your take on it? That's going to be different. So if you're going to say abundant, so if you go and say, Hey guys, there's lots of, there's abundance out there. You have lots of potential inside you. You're not living it. What are most people going to say to that? If there's abundance. They're going to be like, what do you mean? And then I have to elaborate on that. And I'll just say, like, you know, like these people like, you know, Jeff Bezos and, you know, the content creators too, like yourself, you know, Grant Cardone, Gary Vee. You know, there's there's so many opportunities that we can take advantage of in today's society that a lot of people are aware of, but they don't think they can do it, but they can. Why don't I think I can do it? You, you care about what other people think. You don't think that you're the right fit for that mold or you don't think other people will be interested in what you're saying. There's a lot of things. So, so, so what's the most important thing that I need to break to help me realize the abundance in my life? What's the mindset shift that I need to make that I'm, I'm screwing myself over? The mindset is just, if you think you're capable of doing something with whether that be if, you know, you care about other people's thoughts or you care about, you know, what, like what your capabilities yourself are, you just have to kind of expand your horizon. So what you need to do, it's all great stuff, but what you need to do is you need to hit me with a gut punch uh -huh. from the first sentence, especially when you're making, when you have a keynote, you have a little more time to play with because they're watching you. You have 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever on stage of the captured attention. But when you're hitting social, like they're scrolling, man, especially IG, you're scrolling. So you got five seconds to hit them. You got to say something that makes me stop in my tracks to stop scrolling. Like, yeah. damn, that's kind of true what he just said. Yeah. Like, so, like when Gary Vee will open up and he'll be like, stop giving a about what other people think about you and it's like automatically you know he grabs your attention something like that yeah but but your yeah. style like you, you can't just 
Comment yeah, yeah. Here, no, right? I'm not. I'm not going to plagiarize. That's that's you know that's honestly the only framework I'm dealing with at the moment. It's just trying not to you know plagiarize what you, Jay Shetty, any of those guys say. But I know what I want to say. It's just like how I'm going to say it, basically. And from the start, I want a powerful opinion. When I scroll through your thing, I'm like, I don't know who this guy is, but damn, like that made sense. Yeah. What yeah. is that? Just made sense. I'm gonna like I'm gonna go check him out. I, I'm gonna look at his profile, right? And you have you have if you have a daily video on there, there's more content. Like man, I like like this guy's speaking truth. And then they wanna they wanna hire you to come speak at the event, and right then it spreads. But but what you need to do is the philosophy is great. Mm-hmm. You need to craft your your framework and your your personality around an opinion that then hits me in my tracks that I want to listen to you. Yeah. Agree. Right? Gary has his style. He goes all in on it. It's aggressive. He curses. Like they hit you in your face, and people love that or they hate that. But if if you took the emotion out of what he said and just gave the words, you need to stop caring whether people think of you or you suck. Like yeah. it's gone. Nobody's gonna pay attention to it. Yeah. So you need to figure out how you get emotional. I mean, it doesn't have to be yelling emotional. Like Oprah gets emotional, but she hugs you. Like she yeah. virtually hugs you through and touches you. Yeah. I was just watching a video about that, actually, how she oh, engages with her audience, how she like touches them, hugs them, you know, like pregnant lady touching her stomach, touching the baby, you know, congratulating her for her ninth kid, et cetera. You know, she does that great face to face, but she does it in content, too. Like when she's talking to the camera, she's doing the same thing. She's virtually mm-hmm. touching you and and her and, and Gary might have the same message a lot of times, but they're going to deliver it. In totally different, different ways. ways. Yeah. So same thing with you. You have the same message. Like your message may not be that different than Gary's or Oprah's or Eric's or Jay's or whoever, but you're going to deliver it. That's, that's the thing you got to figure out your delivery and you lead with an opinion. You're a weird duck, right? Like mm-hmm. you're a different dude. I'm following you because you're a thought leader. You see the world differently. You're, you're, you see the world in abundance. Most people don't think that way. Yeah, Walk I agree. Down the street, most people are in scarcity mindset their entire life. Yeah. So you're, you're a weird duck. Awesome. I love it. Now, now help me to see your job is to help me see the world. Like you see the world. Yeah. How, how do I get into your head so that you're putting on these crazy glasses and you're saying, no, those aren't glasses. That's reality. Like you're the one wearing the crazy glasses, right? Yeah. So, so you have to get me on board with that. But most people are super close minded and, and they won't hear the message. So you got to, you got to hit them in a way that hits them and said, man, that's, that's true. Yeah. But this, this dude that I've never met said, makes sense. I like it. I'm going to, I'm going to dive deeper into his world. Agreed. Agreed. So that's, that's the craft, right? This yeah. Craft. And, Cause it all makes sense on the, the foundation. It makes sense. But the, the, the marketing part, the piece is going to grab attention and make people feel connected to you is the thing that, that's why I kept probing and asking you questions. Is like, okay, well, hit me with this. I don't even care what your opinion is. Maybe you say there's no abundance in the world and the world sucks. Okay, I'll still help you be a thought leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it that means something, right? Yeah. So, so powerful opinion. Like your first sentence has to be a gut punch every time. And so I would sit and practice and write, you know, 50 different gut punching powerful opinions and then test them on people and test them on creating content. Cool. Cool. That makes sense. And practice. Like you'll suck at the start and then and then with more practice, you'll figure it out. Thanks for All the right, insight man. on that. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck, dude. Cheering you on. Thanks, man. Thanks for the okay. time. If you want to spend some one-on-one time with me, I have a special offer happening right now. Go check out the website right next to me. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.